So my web studio videos seem to be doing pretty well and you guys seem to like it. So I thought I'd demonstrate a brand new feature that they've released that I'm kind of excited about um, and it's the static site export feature inside of web studio. So I've shown you how to deploy a dynamic website using the CLI, upload into Vercel and hosting a dynamic website with CMS capabilities and all the rest of it. I'll leave a link to that below and you'll see it up in the cards. Static websites work slightly differently in that they aren't able to facilitate dynamic data. So for instance, on the X New Worlds website, every time you load that website, before the page loads, it goes, fetches from the CMS, populates the HTML and then renders that page. And what's really important is that the server delivers that code that's already been pre-built. Static websites, you have to build the website and then that's it then. You can use JavaScript to populate things, go and fetch from third party APIs and stuff like that, but you're not getting the important server side delivered content, which SEO relies on, accessibility relies on. So generally it's best for all that important information to be available on page load. So you might ask why you would want a static website. First and foremost, it's just miles quicker. And if you can figure out a way, and this is probably beyond the scope of this tutorial, if you can figure out a way to, every time you upload the CMS, it might fire off a webhook, which builds that website and deploys it. We call this Jamstack. Then you can have a really fast, really minimal website without any kind of preloading or anything happening before the page loads. So it's delivered to the user as quickly as possible. So enough rambling, let's show you what Web Studio have to offer in terms of their static site generation. Let's just take a quick look at the documentation, which I'll leave links to down below. So this gives you a breakdown of kind of the limitations of deploying a static website. And you'll see that these are not supported. Dynamic pages, redirect statuses, client navigation, webhook forms, image optimization, no robots TXT, no sitemap TXT. Um, I do wonder why robots and sitemap aren't available yet. It might be available in the future, but the good news is what you'll see is these are relatively easy to create. Uh, you get access to all of the files, so you have complete control of, of sorting basically a lot of these out. Um, you can run it locally with MPX serve, and that assumes you've got Node installed, and this just means it will serve a static website, pretty straightforward. And they've got some uh, tutorials here for the different various different things. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, first of all, get it on Versa, just so you can see how quick and easy it is so you don't have to worry about it. What we're going to do as well is we're going to set up a AWS hosted website, which is by far and away the cheapest method to do it. And it really breaks down the components that are necessary for hosting a website, which are timeless. This is how we've always hosted websites. So once you learn this, hopefully you can sort of take that knowledge and build more powerful, more bespoke websites with it. So here we have X New World's website, and this is a dynamic website, right? So if we hit head up, this, this has been built, and if you haven't seen my episode on that, then I'll leave a link to that episode. It's a really interesting breakdown of this website and kind of how I've gone about building things. Um, and under the publish, if we hit export, well, this is where we get through to the documentation that I said about, but we can download and build and deploy our exported files. So let's let that do its thing. It's generating all those HTML files. So that's downloaded now. Uh, destination, I don't know what that is, but whatever. If we open this, you've got various files that make up the website and it's broken down in, as you would expect, any website to work. And let's just take a quick look at the HTML. So it's pre, it looks like it's preloading some of the images here. Um, you've got titles, and this is all editable. If you've got VS Code, you can go in and edit any of this. Stuff has even taken some of the meta uh, descriptions. However, I did notice that it didn't take my favicon. Maybe that's some feedback for Web Studio there. And we've got my canonical there, my Google tag. This is all stuff that I've written. What I'm really interested in, if we, uh, hide the header here. Now what you'll see is it's actually built out and rendered the dynamic content of the website. So whilst from now on the content it receives isn't dynamic, at the point of building it's still going to make that call to those third-party TMSs and things like that uh, and build the website accordingly. So even some of the uh, optimized assets are here and stuff like this. So it should this should work in exactly the same way 
uh, as the dynamic website is just that if X New Worlds updates what should be shown on this page, it won't update there. So you've really got to pick what type of website you want to use from this. Now, I would recommend setting up a Git repo so that when you push this up to Git, it then deploys to Vercel because Vercel, Netlify, they work great with that kind of workflow. It means that you can roll back changes should you want to, but for speed, we're going to upload this directly to Netlify. So I've got Netlify open up here. I've set a new project. If you take the zip file that it downloads and upload that, it'll do its thing. We can already preview this. And it's as simple as that. It works exactly the same. It's just that if X New Worlds changes anything on the CMS, we won't see those changes. We'll need to build it again. And everything just works exactly as it did before, which is amazing. But where this gets really exciting, if you want to up your web development game significantly, we're now going to deploy it on AWS. And it's very straightforward using cloud formation. And what I'll do, I'll break down the key components. And this will give you the information you need for websites indefinitely. So a prerequisite to all this is setting up a hosted zone in Route 53 and then creating NS records inside of your domain name provider. So I'm going to leave a link to this uh, official GitHub repo in the description. But if you scroll down here, you can ignore all of this um, and you click on launch on AWS, right? So if you click that, it will take you through, it will most likely ask you to log in, but because I'm already logged in, it will pre-fill this information out. And you're gonna make sure that the AWS URL is, uh, S3 URL is pointed to here. We click deploy. And let's give this a stack name called X New Worlds. The subdomain is probably, uh, we've gotta do that. Um, X New Worlds. And then the domain name, I'm, I haven't got a unique, I don't want to change any of the domain names or anything like that uh, with regards to uh, X New Worlds as domain. I'm just going to put it under my company's domain name. Uh, no is fine here. And then a hoster zone. This is very important. So what you're going to want to do is go to root 53 and I've created a hosted zone with the, the, the domain name the subdomain xnewworlds.jupiterinthedraft.com. If we click on hosted details, we want to copy that and paste that in here. Click continue. This is all fine. This is all fine. Click next. And then we're just going to want to agree to these here. So what this is going to do is going to create a few things. Uh, first of all, it's going to create an S3 bucket, which is basically where all the files are going to be hosted. It's going to create a cloud front distribution, which is a CDN. You probably would have heard that terminology before. A cloud delivery network uh, distributes your website around the world. It's going to also provide a an SSL for xnewworlds or jupiterinthedraft.com so that it's all secure. And it's pretty much going to link all of those together. And that's the bare bones that you need to create this stack. You don't even have to go through cloud formation. You can do those individually, but this is just a quicker and easier route. So it will take a while to do. We'll wait here until it's done and then we'll upload our files and then we'll hopefully see them online. So once it's all done, if you go to the custom resource, find the S3 bucket root, not the logs. And what you'll see is there's a bunch of files here. So if we go to the URL that we set up earlier, you should see this, which is perfect. Now, if we close that, delete all these files, and then upload our files, you won't see it straight away because the CDN needs to validate. So if you go to the CloudFront uh, distribution, go to invalidations and create an invalidation and invalidate all the files with slash star. And you'll see we've got a website. Now it looks like there's something going on here, so I'm not quite sure what that is. 
So we have two issues here. The first one being that we've obviously got all of these content security policy warnings. And this is to do with the, it's almost under the same category of cause, but it's just protecting the website for any malicious code that's being run or code that's being called out to any malicious servers and stuff like that. It's not my remit. I'm not going to claim too much to know too much about it. So please let me know if you know more. I'd love to learn more, but that's what's happening here. And then the second one is if we go to say about, we're getting access denied here. And what's actually happening is the file is located here. And this marries up perfectly with the structure of the files that we uploaded. So this makes sense. We need to rewrite the URL so it always goes to slash about in this circumstance. And then we need to sort out the security policy warnings. So the way that we do that, go to CloudFront. We're going to want to go to something called functions and we're going to want to set up two functions one's going to do the redirecting and the other one is going to add to security policy headers so this is pretty straightforward i'll leave links to everything down below but ultimately this is detecting if it's got a slash or a dot in it um, and presumably that's working out if it's got a file name involved and it's rewriting that url to i guess hide the index.html but um, from the URL not 100% sure and then you build that and then you publish that and then the second function obviously is going to add the security headers now like I say I'm going to leave links to all of these so you should be able to pick it up and understand it but this is going to be unique to your website you can see you've got Google Tag Manager here you've got JS Deliver, Cloudflare, this sort of stuff once again I don't fully understand it this is why I had to kind of bash together to get to work and it does have me wondering things like Vercel and Netlify how they're not going to know what uh, assets and, and things that your website is going to be used so it has me wondering whether they've just got wildcards set on some of this stuff because this is very very important this sort of protects you from cross um, site scripting uh, sending off malicious code and things like that so it is important I just wonder how Vercel and Netlify are doing it so once again we are just rewriting those headers and save it and then publish it. And then we want to go to the distributions. We want to go to behaviors, edit our behavior, and then scroll, scroll right down the bottom and the viewer request, we're going to call a cloud front function and then re redirect to folder. And then the response is going to add those security headers. And we won't see a change straight away. Then it will kick in and everything should be working. If I go to about, about is working. So this is exactly what we want. So I hope you can see how easy it is just to export your site, upload it to something like Vercel or Netlify, and you've got your website. And this is great for websites that you don't have to update an awful lot. You're kind of wanting to save a bit of money on bandwidth and all the rest of it. And it just might suit a few use cases, but also demonstrating to spin up your own server and have something that costs far less than you're ever going to encounter when it comes to something like Versal. And I'm personally in favor of this. This process hasn't changed for years and years and years and is likely what Vercel are using underneath the hood anyway. So it empowers you to be more in control of the magic of hosting a website. So like, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out these episodes which YouTube thinks you're gonna like. Until next time, Happy no coding.